Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Gaz Williams Show Eurorack uh, Adventures, or rather, Adventures in Eurorack with me, Gaz Williams. Haven't quite worked it out yet, but I'm going to do a regular Monday night show. I've, this is my second week at uh, this half past ten slot. Um, so see how it goes, really. Uh, just getting things sorted because we are doing this live. Um, generally, the way I'm doing stuff, I'm just recording live and I'm just putting it up warts and all not editing it at all so <laughs> uh and it's really enjoyable because i do other stuff with video uh work with a lot of editing um got some new sonic state reviews coming up uh keep an eye out for those and you know that that's a completely different thing where you're being much more snippy on the timeline <laughs> these shows are free flowing and long-winded or i don't know it just seems to take a while some of these shows quite last quite a long time uh for some that's okay for others it's like hell on earth <laughs> anyway hope everyone is well out there in the big bad world my goodness strange things afoot for sure however as i often mention thank goodness for music technology so we can retreat into the glorious world of synthesizers and you know not just synthesizers, you know, everything. Music, music. Music is the place. Music is the best, as Frank Zappa said, you know. And uh, I often quote him on that because it's just music is the best. <laughs> yeah, so the best what? The best. <laughs> I, I, I believe that. So um, hence, pretty much my entire life has been... Based, well, my entire adult life has been as a musician and uh, entirely um, and a thrill ride at that. Um, however, we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about things like this or things like that, which is just another view of the thing like that. And this is actually my second rack. So this is the first time I'm showing my second rack. But guys, it looks the same as the first rack. Yes, it is an Arturia um, Rack Brute 6U. And in fact, in this case, this is actually two. Um, I wonder if I can just uh, change the angle on it here. You can see at the moment... Oh, you can just see it. There's another one there. It's most, well, it's empty other than I've put the Neutron in there. That's the Behringer Neutron, which comes in its own case, standalone synth desktop synthesizer, but can be racked as seen here, like through this kind of peeping through the gap view. <laughs> um, but that's just a placeholder, really. I'm, I'm happy to put that back in its case. It's great, though, here, because it is a semi-modular synthesizer with a load of... Uh, utilities on there excellent way into modular synthesis uh, and really cheap as well and I think the poor Neutron has been overlooked a little bit because of all of the reissues coming out from Behringer but the Neutron isn't a reissue a Neutron is a unique synthesizer and is fantastic is a very very well specced synth anyway again not here to talk about that that's merely just living here rather than me having to look at a load of sockets and things which i don't want to look at i'd rather look at this and it's also handy to have this synth but i'm trying to avoid that because the point of this rack now is to take me out of my comfort zone and to take me into a much more modular in environment so the great steve davis has been very encouraging in this respect he said i've too much in my safety zone when i've got a semi-modular synth there or i've indeed got a keyboard there you know this is much more kind of seat of the pants kind of stuff because you know here i haven't got a keyboard attached to it so i'm just going to be generating tones and then going to try and see what i can do to shape a tone without using traditional means I do have a sequencer down here, the noodle box, but that is not plugged in and it's not going to be used tonight. As is the lower rack, actually, is not plugged in. So it's merely there. I was just showing you that that's my expansion zone now. Now, I've gone for these rack brutes because they're 
there's a, there's, some, there's a clever design to them. You can fold them over, f- pull out the little legs. I'm sure you've seen videos of this if you haven't got them already or whatever, blah, blah, blah. But because it can close, it means you can carry it around with it patched, which I think is really clever. But also they come, well, they make a bespoke carry bags. So I bought a carry bag for both. Well, I got for both now carry bags and... Um, so they are mobile, you know, in the least mobile time in modern memory. However, ready ready to rock and roll as soon as time allows. And that's quite an important thing for me because we can talk about the modules and we can talk about the science and, all, and talk about the kind of what's going on with the crazy manipulation of voltages, which is what all of the fun is about. However... It's also trying to find ways to bring this into the real world. Or, or I say the real world. Hmm, what am I talking about? My world and the kind of sessions and the various kind of um, production jobs that I'm on. You know, like it, this could be the biggest distraction of anything. <laughs> you know, it is an enormous thing in itself. So if you're going to use it on on a job, it really does have to have a a purpose, you know. Otherwise, it is just a bit of entertainment, a bit of distraction. Which, being the king of distractions, I know all about such things. So I think back to this rack then. This idea of this one then is going to be much more about, as I say, being in the in the danger zone, being without. You know, being in it without my normal tools. <laughs> so, people who've seen my previous shows may be familiar with pretty much all of these modules. Uh, the newest one is the Disting Mark IV. Now, I got a Disting EX first, and it's, as everybody in the modular world knows, they're just, they're amazing. They are the ultimate Swiss Army Knife module. Uh it can do so much. This this little thing can do so much and it occupies such a small amount of space. It was just a, a bit of a no-brainer to have one to live in this rack. Without a... I didn't have a definite job for it. A bunch of jobs, but... It's one of the things I want to actually do tonight a little bit is um, assign it a few jobs. See, the tasks that it can be, that it can be uh, range from it being an LFO or it being an oscillator, to it being a, a multiplier or a mixer, or it can be um, a sampler or a sample play. Well, I don't know if this does sample playback. The bigger one does. But it can record, and it can be a stereo recorder onto, uh, onto well, let me just get it up on here, this little thing here I'm talking about. I actually haven't got an the SD card in here. I have got one for it, uh, but it can be a stereo digital recorder. Now, that's worth its weight in gold. Just, just that alone for me. Especially when you take this thing away from your computer. You're working in your own little environment here, and to have a stereo recorder on hand, that was the number one thing. And just, just that there in such a small little format. Uh, let me just change that camera angle a little bit, see the whole thing. So, yeah, the, dis- the Disting Mark IV. Now, I mean, these are super familiar to people who know about such things, but if you are new to modular, these things, I mean, to many, it's almost an anathema to what modular is all about, which is all of, you know, which they'll be knob, function. This is all about menus ultimately because even though the menus are rather simple in order to navigate all of what it can be with a very small little uh, dot matrix display it has to let's just have a look now so if i take it to the top we can see the scrolling word of algorithm there so now when i'm in this mode well no this is choosing sorry top level mode so the load load menu help menu help <laughs> settings etc calibration so back to the algorithm mode so click algorithm and then we've got alphabetical numbers uh, uh sorry alphabet to eight 
so what do you call this? I'm being a wally. I'm sure this does have a name, but we go A to 8, 1 to 8, B 1 to 8, C 1 to 8. Uh, if the chat room uh, can help out with that. Is there such a thing? What do you call it? Um, okay. However, I mention that because just little, teeny little module with enormous power. Uh, <laughs> uh, on the front here, we've essentially got two in and two out with Z being a CV input. But what's interesting is this knob here, uh, which is labeled as it's the Z knob, is whatever you modulate into there is going to be that. That uh, any algorithm has a particular has a selected parameter which is assigned to the Z knob. And it's uh the sample rate of the disting is really curious. I think it's somewhere around 76k. So obviously C D format 44.1k 96k. Now I don't know what the logic of this particular sample rate is, but um I'm guessing it's to do with C V um uh, resolution of of it occupy <clears throat> I'm I'm thinking very much about sample rate from a musical point of view as opposed to a um you know this thing does CV but the you know it, like for some people a teeny little menu like this and that kind of stuff is a, is like a, a nightmare but you know say I've got it set up as a mixer here at the moment and um if I press on the top encoder and click, I can see gain for Y, two pan for Y, and gain for X. And in this particular case, the panning for the X input is the thing that gets the starring roll. The, that. <laughs> the Z control, which is then modulatable. So all the algorithms are so roughly kind of work like that. You dial in the algorithm, you can step through a bunch of parameters with one of which one of which can be modulated by the Z. Now, I'm very new to this, just exploring it. Um, and as I say, I just got it in here just ready because I, often as I've been doing things, I've been thinking, oh, how on earth do you do this? Well, this <laughs> probably can do can do it. Ah, nice to see a bunch of people in the chat room. Thank you so much for joining. Um, this, as I say, is... Mm, I'm trying to kind of document this uh, journey I'm having. Um, and I'm going to do some very basic stuff. So I apologise for some... I can see... Wow, you know, I know that there's a bunch of super-duper experts there <laughs> watching. So excuse my, uh, excuse my um, clumsiness here. And also... car. You know, as I often say, it's like I've I've been doing I've been playing with synth since the mid '80s. You know, and um, it's I feel like I'm always always trying to play catch up. There's just so much to to know, and it's a beautiful thing though. I find it so deeply rewarding that the deeper you go with it, the more mind-blowing it gets so hang on in there if you're finding it a bit overwhelming at the, at the moment stick around keep at it because it does get better uh, you know i was doing a project last year where i was having to think about it from uh, an audience who wasn't familiar with musical you know with music tech and all the jargon all the jargon that's going on in this stuff now let's just have a look here um from like say damp you know like damping warp clamp ah, words that just uh there's just so much stuff there's just so much stuff that's really unfamiliar um <laughs> i mean to me most of the most of it is kind of familiar but a lot of the um underlying notion to things is still quite um a little baffling to me. So uh, the angle grinder, for instance, which I'm absolutely loving and I can't wait to show you. I'm going to do this in a moment. Get it up through the uh, 
the data from Mordax, which I've got down in the bottom here. Um, let's just change that angle a little bit. Let's get a bit of the, uh, let's get a bit of the oscilloscope in the action as well. Um, th this thing is a joy and delight to explore. Um, right, actually, let's do it now. Let's do it now. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around with my scatty ways of doing things. I just, uh, well, you know, <laughs> it's just how it is. You're just going to have to get used to it. Right. Um, okay. So first thing I'm going to do, I've got, I've got some, I've got the angle grinder set up in such a way that it's outputting just an, an, a tone. Right. Into the Mordax we go. <laughs> God, that's, that sounds quite sinister. Into the Mordax. Into the Mordax. Right. And we're going to use the Mordax. We're going to use the data as uh, an oscilloscope, which, uh, which would be great. So that should be, we should be able to get something up on that. Out, out, move this around. <laughs> oh, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, this is the thing. My goodness. I mean, wow. When you're playing around with these things, it was making some beautiful sound earlier. <laughs> and, right, let me just see. I'm just going to just see if I'm being stupid here. Uh, right. I can I come? Okay. I'm going to just pull the fader down a moment. Let's just plug this in. See if I get some tone. There we go. Okay. I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> right. Okay. Out of the angle grinder. Into the data. Out of the data. And in to... I'm going to show this little thing here. This thing is an IntelliGel uh, hub. It's a little four passive, like, mult. And um, the reason why I'm using it at the moment is because uh, the input coming into the video recorder here is seeing a stereo input. So I'm literally just doubling the output using that. So it's super simple. But that thing's quite nice. It comes in two formats, um, <laughs> which is one of these, magnetic or non-magnetic. So... <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, the rack brute is metal, but it's like aluminium or aluminum, uh, which is non-magnetic. So I got the magnetic one, but it just dangles. <laughs> right. What am I doing? I'm trying to see why the oscilloscope is not tracking my signal. Let me see what's going on. Um... I'm uh, just looking in the chat room. Into the Mordax caves with the angle grinder. <laughs> yeah, to defeat something or other. Brilliant. Yeah, Mordax. Um, but why? I'm, I'm just going to see what's going on. Oscilloscope. Oops. Let's come back out of there. Oscilloscope. Okay. We got sat. We got. We got action on the screen. <laughs> Come on. Thank you, everybody, for the patience here. Uh, let's have a look there. There we go. So we can see action there. Now, let's see why we can't hear anything. I'm going to play with the frequencies, which is... Ooh. That oscilloscope isn't quite as bright as I'd like it to be. Let me just see if I can change that in the settings. I, don't know. I mean, I don't even know if there is such a... No, I don't think there is. It looks fine here. It just is a bit dark on there. Um, you can read it, but it's not popping out, is it? Let me see if I can do something. Uh, camera peeps. <laughs> what would make that pop out a bit more? Well, okay, we can see it then. Okay. We can see it. I'll try and figure out in future to how to make that a bit brighter. Oh, it's really dark. Okay, but we can more or less see it there. Um, right, well, I can see it, <laughs> but I ain't hearing it. So I've got, I've got one to one, one coming out. I would have thought that, that 
I mean, it certainly looks like sound. I just does my head in when this stuff happens. <laughs> Just before I had the camera and before I was rolling, I had some really cool things going on. Yeah, yeah, okay. But people, you know this, don't you? With modular, I mean, and this is the simplest thing. I mean, I just don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> All right. See, so I know that. I know I've got sound. Um, let's go into the VCA first. So at least I've got a volume control. Okay. <laughs> ah, you know, this is frustrating now. Okay, let's let's see now. Why am I... I was trying to do something so simple and so simple it's... Uh, mm, 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 okay. Herein is a kind of... A, a huge thing about this stuff, isn't it? Is that um, you have to be really aware of each part of the signal chain... So if I'm coming out of the angle grinder and it's making a sound, when I go into the oscilloscope and I see the oscilloscope uh, and I know ooh, I'm turning the frequency, we can see that changing. And I'm coming out of the Mordax. Is it, I don't know. if I got? A, does it mute the audio? No, I doubt it. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah, I mean, I can get sound out. Look, if I just go straight into this here, just a proof of concept, this is going to probably... Hang on. Yeah, we get a beep. So, hang on. Let's just... Okay, so... I don't know. <laughs> what I don't like doing when I'm doing these things is in any way make you think it's the gear that's at fault. It's clearly me. Um... Okay, so uh, <laughs> falling at the first hurdle here. Um, <laughs> I have the data. Yes, uh, I just thought when you connected to one, it just rooted straight out of one. Um, and I didn't know that it was, it's done that fine so far. Let's just try going into two, have another look at two. Hmm. Okay, let's go back to one. Um, okay, I'm going to have to change what I was going to do then because I just don't know why that's doing that. Um, let's just bring this into the output of this. Hang on. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go output here. Hang on, and pull it down, and we should just have our tone. Okay. Yes. Okay, I think I know what the problem is now. I've just not got enough gain in the, the signal here. Why would that be? <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, folks. Just bear with me a minute. I am a bit hopeless at this at sometimes. I was having super joy earlier. I was, I was, you know, I had about six modules on the go. And I thought to myself, shall I leave this all patched up? And and then I thought, oh, no, let's rebuild it. <laughs> uh, okay, so, all right. I think the thing is, I think what it is, is I'm getting a lot less gain than I was expecting, and I'm not sure why. Uh, oh, hang on. I, I, mm, there's a bit of a patching issue. Uh, you're plugged into the CV input. Yes, Mars face. I Mars face has po Mars face has pointed out something that I am now egg face. <laughs> Mars face to egg face in one simple move. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> right. This is the joy. This is the joy of live streaming. Right. Thank you, everyone, though, for joining in and sticking around. It Things will get interesting as I get my brain in order, right? So I'm coming out of that, going in here. Um, okay, and then out of here, let's turn that up. I'm still, I think I'm still getting stuck here, though. And this is why. I'm not sure why the Mordax isn't letting it through. That's what I'm confused about. 
proof of concept. If I just pop out that and just go in there. Coming through. So Mordax is not letting it through. And I don't know Mordax well enough to know what I'm doing wrong here. Um, so that's why I'm calling it Mordax, the data. And again, no, no, um, as, you know, this is not uh, any any um, anything to do with it. the data being in any way <laughs> inadequate. It's me. I'm the inadequate one. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know why that's doing that. So um, I know why. I know why. Those are the blooming CV inputs. I'm, right, okay, guys. <laughs> right. Sometimes you feel foolish in public. This is like those dreams when you're in the nude. Yes, I feel just like that. This, I now <laughs> want to kick myself in the bum if I could, because I'm good. I, I know what I was doing wrong. I was, come, I, was, I was plugged into the outputs. I was plugged into the CV inputs of the data. And it's super obvious and now let me just show on the camera this is live humility <laughs> yeah i see the data's got one to four here uh but actually there's little ones with arrows going down underneath so yes there we there we go it was out of shot you see you'd have all spotted it straight away <laughs> Yes. So now, okay, now we're good. We're good now. We're good. And the fun can finally begin. <laughs> Bad patching nude. <laughs> You'll sub to that. Ah, uh, do you know what? This is fun though. I, again, I'm, I know I keep saying thank you for joining me, but it really does make, it's a, it's, it's like a, just a, I, it's just like a different experience. I was coming up to play with the modular and I've been so busy on a bunch of other things that this for me is almost, it's my kind of um, like R&R &R time, you know. Um, but I'm trying to resist so I can do it on like like tonight on the show <laughs> so when i was like getting set up earlier and i was playing around with it i was feeling a bit naughty it was a bit like oh yes so i gotta get back to what i was doing because i was having a lot of fun with it and hopefully we can get back there as well um okay so i'm oh, i'm sorry about the oscilloscope just not quite being bright enough Hopefully that you can see it. Mm. You see, I'm still, I'm still trying to figure things out. I'm so, I'm so green, you know. I'm so green. This is. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if I just have the. I'm just trying to decide which way to make it display, if I could make it display a bit stronger. Anyway, right, okay. Let's get that oscilloscope working first. <laughs> uh, right. You see now the angle grinder. All right, let's get this working. So I want to get this down. Yes. Oh, can we see this better, please, camera? This is so nice, though, when you see the uh, with the oscilloscope. It makes all the difference, doesn't it, to being able to understand what's happening with your waveforms and listening to it. Let's get some more. Okay. Now, when I bring in off the angle grinder, you can see, uh, let me get a split screen, I think. Uh, 
I'll just set up a split screen of, of both. Let's just pop me out of that one. Okay, there we go. That's cool. Um, so on the angle grinder, these four sliders here. This is the wrong way around, isn't it? Let me just swap swap this around, make it a bit more logical. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's a, that makes a bit more sense. No, it's just that you, the this is a quadrang. Uh, what do they say now? It's a, it's it. The, the, the sine waves that this angle grinder generates it lets you sort of create four division well four oh, hang on let me get this working trying to remember how to get the oscilloscope to kind of pause to stop it I know it's about it finding it in the I've pressed something on the data and it's taken it into a mode on the oscilloscope that I'm not familiar with the controls that I'm looking for are not there help data users what do I do uh, okay, but we, once I get that more static, I just need to get that static so we can see how that waveform is affected. And it's really nice. Oh. Thanks folks for sticking in with me. I'm a bit all over the shop today. It's going to get fun, I promise. Okay. I just want to st I want I want the data to stop rolling and I don't I don't know how to get it back. <laughs> I don't know how to get it back. I don't know. I really don't. Wah! Okay. Well, we're hearing a nice note here. Let's uh, let's lower that note. Oh, I just wish I knew what I was doing. I'm so sorry about this. I feel like I've like I typically when I'm reviewing things and I read the manual from cover to cover I, but with a lot of these things I've not been doing that I've been leaving it more to a, an ex, more of an exploratory uh, approach and it's, uh, it's biting me on the arse I tell you what <laughs> but you guys are nice you're sweet guys and gals I should say although does guys cover the whole spectrum <laughs> thing I can say about this angle grinder though it always sounds great yeah I'm still locked out of this data and I don't know why and it's doing my head in I'm like and I don't want to get upset with it because I know it's my fault it's not it's not its fault it's doing what it's meant to be doing it's just me okay Anyway, okay, well, let's just move on. And if anyone who knows the data can just sort of uh, just chip in and... Uh, I just want it to go back to the regular oscilloscope mode. And I can't... I can go into different modes, you see. So I've got... 
There's some really nice things you can do here. Spectrum analyzer. Showing, which is great actually, seeing what the harmonics are. This is... Yeah. Oh, I hope you can see this on here. It's a great display. What am I trying to do? I'm just trying to get the oscillos I want the oscilloscope in data to go back to its normal, its regular mode. It's in a mode where I can't get at the controls that I recognise. But I mean, to be honest, I just don't know what I'm, with the oscilloscope how to make the oscilloscope kind of freeze. It's it's rocking. It's kind of moving, and I want it to stay. I want it to be stable. And I know that that's a massive confession to oscilloscope kind of uh, veterans okay so anyway the, the fact is by adding and subtracting these elements in the angle grinder it's a beautiful oscillator it's got so much textural quality so anyway let's do something interesting now so we're going to take I'm going to modulate that envelope uh, sorry I'm going to bring in the Zadar from Chaos Devices okay and I'm going to uh, I need to create a I need to create some sort of pulse to, uh, so the uh, Zadar is going to get triggered so I need to figure out how to do that. So I'm going to come out of the Zadar and I'm going to go into ch -ch 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 the... Hang on. Oh. Aha. I am missing a Nurly. <laughs> I'm just going to borrow a Nurly from the Batumi. Nurlys, the, these little screws are so amazing i really really i was i was really i mean an army because they're expensive you know you do pay a lot of money for them but they are essential little things let me just mute that for a moment uh let's take that out. okay there we go sorry but me i will sort you out later Okay, great, 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 great. Right, so I want an envelope to do interesting things to this sound. So this sound... Um, oh, right, I'm now thinking of another idea. <laughs> um, right, so I just... My... my that threw me earlier. I'm so sorry, everybody. Thanks for sticking around, though. Uh, I just, I'm just i just trying to get my head together. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, so we've got our sound. Now, let's do something to that sound. So uh, I'm going to take out... Um, I'm going to take out uh, an LFO from the Batumi. And I'm going to put it into the angle grinder. I, uh, so I can take out a sign... A saw, a sign, a saw, or a square. There are more options. There's a little extra uh, module that you can attach to a Batumi that gives you uh, the assign functions. It, it puts it out onto an extra uh, switches. Otherwise, you can open it up and you can change a few of the settings. So I think, I think that the sawtooth can be assigned to various other waveforms. But I think in this case, I think I'm just going to use a square and I'm going to bring a square in and I'm going to put it in into the first part of this angle grinder. OK, so let's see. Now that should be. Yeah, that's doing exactly the kind of behaviour that I wanted to do. Now, there's four outputs of the Batumi, this essentially, yeah, four uh, LFOs, um, you can chain these together in a really cool way. So, um, 
let's there's four inputs on the angle grinder so let's see what happens if we connect them oh straight away straight away they're interesting aren't they more four no three now they're all set to run free at the moment but we're going to change some of these modes now and see how different it sounds once I've got the four plugged in so I'm assuming that the starting positions of these are going to make a difference I'll leave them in the middle for now. Four. So I'm using just square waves, but I think varying that varying that is gonna be interesting. Okay, let's do that now. Oop. We've got to get some pitch movement as well, haven't we? Ah, that's what we'll do with the envelope. We'll use the envelope. We'll send pitches. And I wonder if I can use the disting to quantize those pitches. Now, that's not something I've ever done, but it's something I've been thinking about a lot. Okay, so we've got some nonsense going on here. Let's have a look what we can do, though. Okay, so these are all running free at the moment. Now, if I run it in quad, I think... I think these... In quad, I think those settings don't make... It's only the first one, I think. Hmm, maybe these would be better to do these with saws when we're doing... Move those across onto source for, for, for a moment. Oh, don't know where. Let's just see why that's going a bit weird. Hang on. I don't know. <laughs> it's lost. It's it's died. <laughs> why did it die? Let's just put it back. Why did it die? Oh, did it go too fast? No. See, why did it die? I have no idea why it died. <laughs> oh, here we go. Right. Oh, hang on. We've got a dodgy. Ah. Yeah, okay. The 2 HP, maybe because it was, wasn't was fastened in properly. And that's why it died. It's a bit loose. I think I need to open it up. A bit. Okay, great. So, there's rhythms there now, isn't there? Yeah. Oh, let's put this through the filter. It needs to go through the filter, doesn't it? I'm going to take that out, signal in, into the Sea Devils. Okay, lovely. Okay, all right, things are going to start getting fun. So this is now phase.
go to the fourth mode on the Batumi now, called Divide. Let's see what happens. Oh, cool. Love a Synthy or a VCS3. are wildly different, aren't they? <laughs> right, I'm turning them free running now. Of course! There's a bunch of outputs and there's a bunch of filter inputs. Frequency. Let's see what happens. Oh, this is cool. Oh, and there's another input there as well. <laughs> Not my most musical endeavors tonight. quad mode on the Batumi now. Response input. Response is a resonance. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so much fun. Okay. Let's... Uh, Stop that for a moment. Um, thank you, people. I say people. I want to call a group of people. People. Everybody. People is horrible, isn't it? People. Is that too informal? Hmm. Friends. Yes. Thank you, friends. That's better. <laughs> um, right. Yes. So I'm going to do this now with envelopes 
to into the pitch and I'm going to see what happens if I can actually figure out how to make that work. <laughs> Hope everyone's sort of enjoying this. I really apologize for that slow start. <laughs> such, it, such is the world. Ah. Yeah, but these these three chaos devices, Zadar, Samara and Batumi, mm. they're joyful, wonderful things. I think the Zadar is the most interesting module I've experienced to date, actually. So let's play around with that so I can show you a little bit what I mean. Oh, scroll back up at Cas Williams. I'm looking in the comments. What if I must have missed something? Have I? Mm -mm -mm. Um. Oh, the small dot on the top left of the screen. The Maldax data is showing you in the minimal display mode. You need to click on the button above the dot. Oh, there's a dot. Yes, I see the faint dot. I'm pressing the button. Oh. Hmm. Oh, I can't make that. I don't know. Click on the button above the dot. <laughs> No, I can't make that. That doesn't seem to be. I mean, that I would think. Mm. No, 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 no. Oh, I had the wrong camera on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ah, really? Yes. Don't know if I'm coming or going. Oh, yeah. Wow. Got some cool things happening, though. Um, Wednesday. On Wednesday, there is a ex some. There is a world exclusive that I'm involved in or will be revealed on Wednesday. <laughs> Not a major thing, but I'm, I'm quite excited about it. So um, check that out. I'm going to be doing my show Wednesday night, um, which I have got quite a good idea for. So it's a little bit less uh, hodgepodge as tonight. Oh, I'm so sorry why I'm being a... Right. All my camera angles all look skew if as well. Okay. Um... Thank you in the chat room for taking... I, I, they fly by and then I miss them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Hmm. Okay. I can't get that back working. I'll, I don't really ignore the data for now. Um, I will return to it when I know and I will show the stuff that it does with confidence <laughs> and clarity. Right then. So what nonsense we've got going on here, right? So I'm going to be sending envelopes. Now, I need to make these envelopes just play infinitely because if we set the envelopes... Uh, Hang on, I'll just do this first. Where's the best camera for this? Okay. So Zadar is quadruple envelope generator. Yes, so four different envelopes. But rather than them being typical ADSR envelopes, there's hundreds and hundreds of just different envelope kind of preset shapes that you can then warp and 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 sequence in a, in a way with the with the chaining okay so making the envelope repeat endlessly now um so our envelope is just cycling around and the shapes loads of different shapes here oh let me get my hand out of the way now Let's see what this is doing to our pitch. Ah, this is so cool. So, time, how long it takes. Okay. <laughs> That's good. 
up a bit. And then it'll descend. Here it comes back up again. So being able to warp this shape in real time. Let's find a different shape. Oh, let's make it go faster through a Ooh, this looks like a curious one. Slow it down through it more. You can make these envelopes go like this is going to last for 45 seconds for it to complete this uh, envelope journey now. Up it goes. Make it go a bit faster. Okay, and that I think as well. <laughs> right, let's. Oh, okay. This one looks quite fun with lots of lots of little spikes on it. Divide mode now. <laughs> It'll level down a bit. Okay, we need more things to happen. looking for the musicality in things and uh, maybe I should be a little less like that and a little bit embrace a little bit less musical ah we're going to see if we can uh, I don't know why I was adjusting the Samara it's not Okay. Yeah. Right, more things. Envelope two is going to come out of this thing. And what shall it go into? I'm going to put it into the filter amount input. see if I change channel with channel B okay I'm gonna make that envelope then loop uh, so that is around here da, da, da. oh yeah
minute long. Let's set this on. Wow. So that can be 1,800 seconds long. It's the longest it can be. And they do get kind of pretty wacky shapes down here. Let's lower the strength of that filter one. So, so far, so good, but it's all this kind of... This is this kind of stuff. I mean, I'm clearly a beginner here at this sort of stuff. But this is sort of the kind of Yoda Raki thing that I often heard with just lots of interesting sound, but not necessarily music. But wow, it's rich down there, though. It does feel so good. Still, we demand more action. We want more things going on. I need some more patch cables. Oh, excuse my head. That rack is crying out for a maths. Now, is that the sort of thing I can do, though, with the... Um, Disting. Oh, this Sea Devils filter is just so cool, though. Changing the shapes is a huge consequence. in here. I see. Vlad, uh, I hope I'm taking patch notes. I should be taking patch notes. Plenty of space for it on here, I've got no excuse. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what the logic is behind some of the shapes on the Zadar um, in terms of where they're from. Or I, I, I do think that some of the folders, they're all grouped into um, A, B, actually A, 10 per alphabetical. It's that thing again, I don't know what it's called. Stretch that out. I think there are some which are based on envelopes of pianos and standard instruments. Um, channel A. Oops. Let's try and get... Okay, I'm going to move things around a little bit now. Oh. 
That's nice. Here. So yes, I'm not really making music. I'm sorry. This is a kind of hinting at music. What is music? I guess if there's some pulse and some sense of pitch. I like it. <laughs> okay, I'm putting it into the phase mode now. That's cool as hell that is. Whoa. Oh, Mr. Richard Nickel in the chat room. Absolute Yodorak. Well, not just Yodorak. Synthesizer royalty. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, let's get something. Let's get something else. Right. Drifting away. All right. <laughs> okay. Let's just take that out for a moment. We'll have a little think. Um, so, yes. Um, thank you, everybody. Anyone? It's great, great to see a chat room going on there. Um, yeah. I, I'm never quite sure whether I should... Uh, edit things down or just leave it raw and just leave it up because i guess we're all going to make mistakes aren't we as a bumbling through life and uh if we do it publicly and don't pretend to know everything surely that's good for the soul surely that's good <laughs> um yeah even if you've been messing around with this stuff as long as i have well not euro rack for synthesizer stuff anyway um well, how are we looking for time? I'm going to probably sign off soonish, actually. Um, but uh, let's think, where else was I going to do? Yeah, so I, I was keen to show a bit of Zadar and also Angle Grinder because both of those things have have been tempting me quite a lot. I think I'm not going to delve too much deeper into the disting just yet because I'm re yeah, super new to it and uh, I'm still just learning how to navigate it and... Um, but certainly if you if you are interested in modular for, and you're just getting into it, then the disting certainly represents good value for money. I know what I can do with the disting. I know exactly what I can do with the disting. What does every good patch need? It needs effects. <laughs> so the disting being a bit of a can do everything, can be a bit of an any anything, can function as an effects unit. Hooray! And in fact, even better than that, can function as a stereo effect unit. So I can create a stereo out of the disting. Right. And then, so that's going to come out of the... Let's, get, let's see if we can get a bit of this action here. Now, I'm going to have to refer to the manual, I think, unless I can spot it, uh, to find which algorithm the... Uh, delays on so first thing i'm going to go into my algorithms menu algorithms yes change i think there is some fairly early on um, 
How am I finding the rack brute? I'm finding the rack brute terrific. It's for for my needs. I'm very pleased with it. I've never thought about the power drain of anything. It's never seemed to be a problem. Um, rectify. I think these first ones um, are, are more utilities. Quantize. Ah, yes, quantize. That's what we want to do as well. I'll look at the quantizer maybe. But let's just get the um, sample and hold. Oh, look at all of this good stuff. Slew rate limiter. Pitch tracker. Yes, I've been playing around with that. Clockable delay. Now, that could be quite cool. Uh, but I might... Yeah, go on. Let's use a clockable delay. But um, All right, let's have a look. Oh, that's acting like a pan controller. Oh. Oh, D2. D2. Thank you so much, Harry Turner. D2. D2 is tape delay. That's what we want. Yes. This is what we want to be. I'm not sure what Z is uh, mapped to. <laughs> SDR, thank Fab, loving the live streams you're doing, guys. Thank you so much. I've been a little bit, uh, I've been a little bit out of sorts a little earlier today, uh, but people stood by me, and I love you all for that so much. Thank you. It's a real pleasure. Okay. So let's see what parameters we've got available to us then. Oh, Z is feedback, right, so I'm assuming then it's going to be delay time. Haha, <laughs> it's quite fun. quite nice yeah a rough day here too your live stream is cheering me up thank you so much that is a lovely thing to say and that's made me feel really happy that's justified everything the perfect thing to say thank you mark oh it's having some delay i seem to be distorting the delay quite a bit but having some delay makes the deep, dark mystery of it all. No definite distortion going on, but... What's... Oh, yes. know what's really fun now is as i'm getting action different things going on i'm like looking about just how much more possibilities in front of me yeah oh i think the attenuverter could work quite nice here for this delay because i'm coming in hot into this delay i think Delia Derbyshire Day soon, November the 23rd. The, oh, there's a drama of Delia Derbyshire. Um, oh, that's lovely. 
This is starting to really please me now. Speed. I'm just looking at these outputs. Oh. What does that do? Oops. Length. Oh, okay. I think what I might do with this thing is uh, print out some, uh, like make a, make a cheat sheet. I did see there is a table that I could print out that's got all the algorithms and the basic functionality. I think I'll print that out. Oh, I love it. Oh, I was reading in the disting instructions that if you... The Z knob stuff is scanned at incredibly high sample rates. So, so in terms of the fidelity of it, is really fine-tuned but changing stuff with the s knob can often be stepped it's not so much a performance knob hence the z knob having a uh... oh hang on what am i talking about the z knob having a modulatable input quick <laughs> find a cable right Let's send another Zadar envelope into it. I'm going to send... Right, let's come out here. I'm going to go into channel C on here. I'm going to make that then repeat. <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> Let's get that other camera up so you can see that a little better. Slow that down. Let's have a look at some... That's surely got to be the Devo mode. Come on, let's leave it in Devo mode for the moment. Oh. This is like the Devo shuffle. Right. We should assign action, I think, into the Zadar as well. Because we can move some of this stuff around, can't we? Right. Okay, let's send some... Well, we've got still a load of outputs available from the Batumi. Alright, we're coming out. I'll just come out of a sign. <laughs> Get a bit more. <laughs> see, see what this thing's doing now. that in wrong again <laughs> that that's right now now 
if we make these go really, really fast. Sorry. <laughs> oh. I mean, it's all fun, isn't it? Well, it is for me. I don't know if it is for you. <laughs> Listening to it. <laughs> distortion going on. Yeah, I reckon I could use this a tenny verter to try and get rid of some of that. Let's try it. So my input is coming into it's gonna go into the Whoa. And I need another cable. Wow, I think I might have run out oh no. Yeah I've got a few more here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have to order some more cables. I'll do that tomorrow because, my, my goodness, I thought I had a lot. <laughs> That's not enough. Okay, I'm going to come out of the attenuator and then into X here. Oh. It's an amazing noise. some stereo delay going on there now. Wow. What's going on? <laughs> In here. Oh, yes. Ah, why is that running away? Sort of being in control and being slightly out of control. And as a die, you know, it's just making like as each of the well, I've got three envelopes on the go at the moment, and they're all making their way across their journeys at different rates and whatnot. Okay. see what happens if I put this in there and let's have a look to which channel let's do it to channel A no C looks like yeah C is causing that havoc there okay, so I plug that into a sign now I think I go in my menu and I can come into my little I know, I think it's that second page. Yeah. Oh, look at this now. It's changing the shape, isn't it? So let's see what else we can. T 
time now. Let's get the graphic back up so we can see what's going on. Okay. Oh yeah. Can you see it? <laughs> so I, I guess a big thing about this modular malarkey is the quest for music within it. Finding something that other people could relate to in some kind of way. <laughs> I'm not saying that this is. It's definitely interesting not having sequences, uh, well, you know, not using sequences and just relying on a completely different approach. I wonder if it's like changing from a tape delay to a big reverb. I must, I know there is some. Um, that's all like where they are. Uh, DJ filter, tape delay, animator. Resonator. Ooh, resonator. L2. Thanks, Harry. <laughs> oh, the chat room. What would I do without you? Thank you so much. JLK L2. So the usefulness of the disting is also the usefulness of a chat room. But not all of us can have that all the time. We look at through some of the parameters of the reverb. is wet dry. Of course it is. Yes. Thanks, Harry. Yeah. If you want it more musical and tameable, use a quantizer. So that's what I was going to do. I'm using it as a reverb at the moment, but um, you can see how useful a, a disting is. A disting can be so many things, can't it? What I'm going to do in future is not unpatch, is leave, is get a patch together and then 
maybe explain the patch perhaps I can't believe the mistakes I was making earlier the Teneverter at the moment there I've just just that my camera's my screen is obscuring a little just showing. okay <laughs> so the other rig which was the rig that I used on last Monday's show I've been playing with that that's what I've been playing with I've, I've been having a, just like really deep joy with it musical joy I guess um, whereas this has been looking at me a little bit and I've been thinking I just want to I want to play it I want to play it but I want to play it on my show so I can I feel I've learnt loads of things tonight actually so thanks everyone for sticking around it's encouraging me to do it Yeah, so this is a different rack. Uh, Warpigs is asking me, I, I took out the Radical. No, the Radical is in the other rack and uh, gets a lot of use. Big, big module. Some of these are really slow envelopes. They're kind of curious what they're just. Oh, yeah, look, yeah, that's been the time that's been modulated, so. Yeah. There's a world of adventure in the Zadar. I don't know whether to risk getting into pitch quantizing tonight. Maybe I should. Because I just haven't done it yet. Well, not with this. Um, but we'd have to lose our reverb. And the Sea Devil's filter. I'm sure you would agree. It's a thing of joy. This is a STG Sound Labs creation, of course. That's suit and tie guy. Just released his new oscillator. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm enjoying this. It's kind of like. It's making me feel quite peaceful. But like just a press on the Batumi and changing the mode and then... It... We're off somewhere else. This the divide mode. <laughs> I kind of like the quad when it's just going in a cycle. Here we go. Okay, right, let me think about this. <laughs> A6 for the quantizer. Harry Turner. I owe you a pint. <laughs> um, does sound gorgeous, that filter, doesn't it? I'm assuming that the quantizer. Let's well, let's just do it. Okay. Goodbye, re reverb. Thank you. Then we say six. I'm assuming I'm going to need to put it earlier in the chain, but let's just 
turn it on now just to see what happens. Right. Oh, sorry. Make sure. Uh, let's see. So you can see a little bit what's going on here. Oops. A6. Okay, yeah, of course, we've lost our stereo. Let me just repatch this. Um, oops. Sorry, not the best camera angle there. Oh. Um. Uh, right, let me just turn this off. Save us going mad. Uh. Okay, I need to bring my little IntelliGel little splitter back in to play. And I'm going to plug that. So these things are really cool. I mean, God, they're just so easy, so simple. And yeah, I think I'm going to get another one. So for some stereo, so you could use it in a stereo way. Uh, okay, so that's essentially our mono to sort of dual mono adapter. Uh where was our sound going? It was coming out of here. Let's plug it in. So this should be just our sound. Or why have we lost our sound? <laughs> I've lost our sound. <laughs> Let's. I'm going to go straight into the out of the uh, VCA. Okay, so the sound is, what have I done? You see, it's so easy to lose the sound, isn't it? Um, what did I do? I unplugged this, I've took my output into there. Let's just try, let's just try taking it from here. Mm -mm. No sound. Oh, maybe. Maybe that no sound signals the end of tonight's shenanigans, I think. Because I was thinking of calling it a night. So I think I will use that as a as a reason. Okay, um, I've been on long enough, I think. <laughs> um, just check through the notes. Thank you, everybody in the chat room, for all the advice and assistance as well, especially through the dark moments of the beginning of this little episode. <laughs> but there is a lesson in there for us all, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to do my regular show Wednesday. I've got something quite nice lined up for that, so please tune in. That's going to be 8pm uh, UK time. And uh, I'm going to be back next Monday with more of this. I will try and be a little bit more organised than this time. Uh, <laughs> but I hope you've enjoyed it. It's me just literally just trying to find my way through this stuff and uh, not professing to know it at all. So being able to share that with you, that that's what I'm, you know. So I guess that includes failing as well and not find, you know, doing things wrong. Um and that's part of the learning process. I do feel I've learned a lot. I feel I've, I feel that the Zadar, I'm getting there with it a bit now. I've been really wanting to play. I, I've been reading the manual of the Zadar and, but not actually doing hands on with it. So it's something I was really, really keen to, to do. Uh, but I'm going to spend a little bit of time with it. <laughs> but I was trying to not, I really was trying to not play with it so I could have this explore exploration tonight so um so thank you for your patience that's um that's uh, <laughs> uh remember oh thank uh, remember it's not always the destination but the journey um yes it is it, and it absolutely is and i feel like uh you know it, at times it was just you know hinting towards music you know um again the disting i was mentioning earlier could act as a recorder so if it wasn't being put to use in any way then um it could be recording and i've got 128 100 yeah 128 gig um sd card to go in there um yeah yeah 100 yeah so that could record that could record flipping for hours and hours and hours um and then just 
see, you know, going through it all and finding nice little loops and nice little bits to then put into other devices like the Octatrack or the MC707. Gosh, it's like an endless, endless thing. But um, yeah, I think for me, my journey with this stuff is starting to take a different, a different route now. And I think that this one, I haven't got names for them yet. I will name them uh, for the two, the two sets that I've got. Um, but I, I, yeah, this one I think is going to take me down into new territories and the additional modules that I'm going to put into this one will be things that will continue this, um, uh, on non-safety where, you know, like, uh, in the deep end things that really baffle and, uh, and mystify a little, the angle grinder is a, amazing module it just continues to blow me away and yet i don't you know i sort of sort of understand it but then when i'm messing around with it it's like oh yeah oh okay well i like what it's doing um so whereas the other rig i think it's gonna is is a bit more is a bit more kind of um a bit more like since with mixers and effects you know it's sort of a little bit more uh safe in that respect whereas this is going to be going further and further into the into the deep unknown and that indeed is a journey that i want you to come on with me i'll just see what i did there uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't ouch i hate saying that um but please do yeah if you because um every monday I'm going to try and do this. And hopefully, you know, if I can keep doing that in a year from now, I might kind of know what I'm doing. And uh, and then, you know, and I'll be really thankful to the, you know, to all of the help and assistance. I mean, I'm in a very fortunate position. I'm great friends with Ben, Div Kid, you know, and Alex Mylar Melodies, you know, that, uh, and, and, and Robin from Molten uh, Music. And a whole bunch of others. Richard Nickel, dear friend from Pittsburgh Modular. So I'm I'm in a really, really good position in that way that I can call friends up and go help. And they have each one of those I've mentioned have been incredibly uh uh supportive. Uh, the great Jörg Scharf from Radical as well is a, is a great friend of mine now as well. And uh, you know, really thankful for these opportunities to get to meet these wonderful people. But um they are also really naughty boys because each one of them is thoroughly, has thoroughly been encouraging me to go further and to and push myself down these, uh, you know, to, to go more down into this. And yes, I am looking at modules quite a lot and fantasizing about ones and how things are going to go in the future. So I think in terms of this journey for me is all just beginning really and uh yeah who knows what and what who knows where it, it will take me you know i really i really don't really know and tonight was cool because even though i was only hinting at stuff i'm kind of thinking oh this this pathway into something that, that when it's doing stuff that is enticing and beautiful and you you know, barely in control of it, but that that is that's the lure of it for me. I think. Um, anyway, I am waffling probably far too far too long. Um, just have a quick look in the chat room again. Thanks everybody for uh, for joining in and, and also terrific support in, in in you know for helping me out when I'm floundering. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'll see you on Wednesday if you want to join me then. Otherwise, I'll be back for more Eurorack adventures on Monday. Thanks, everybody. Good night and take care. Bye-bye.